Hello, my name is uh, Mark Lantain. I'm a senior research fellow here at um, NUPI in the area of Asia Studies. And I'm very pleased to have with me today Professor uh, David Shambau from uh, George Washington University, renowned expert on many things China, and here to also launch um, the latest in quite a few very uh, well-received, well-regarded books in the areas of Chinese politics and foreign policy, uh, specifically the book entitled China's Future. And I guess the first question I'd like to ask you is, uh, what is this book about? How would you summarize it? Well, I first should thank you and Nupi for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be in Oslo and at the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs uh, to launch this book, um, which has just come out. The book is, as the title suggests, about uh, China's future. And it tries to peer into the unknown, really, because none of us know China's future. Um, but. Uh, I try to identify in the book the variables that are at play in China today that are propelling the country forward and try and establish where I think some of the alternative pathways that China could pursue, what they are, uh, and what some of the consequences um, of each potential pathway is. But I'm also very interested in looking in, in the book, uh, and I think we should all look at China comparatively. So I try and place China in a broader comparative context in two ways. One is as, as an economy, and the other is as a political system. So as an economy, I try to place China in, in context of other newly industrialized economies, so-called NIEs, of which China is just one of 100 since 1960 that have entered that phase of economic development, transitioning from being, being a developing economy to an NIE, and then hopefully on the way to becoming a full developed economy. So I, I try and bring to bear some of this comparative perspective on where China is today and the challenges they're going to face based on what other NIEs have faced. And then secondly, the political system. China's political system is a uh, Leninist political system. It's a communist type political system still. Uh, it's one of five remaining communist party states in the world. It's um, and those kinds of political systems have a certain set of predictable stages that they pass through, a kind of life cycle, you might say. So again, I think we have to view China in that context as well. So I try and bring those two kind of macro perspectives to bear on where China is today and then where it might evolve over the next decade or so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, you are the author of uh, many books on China, uh, both related to domestic and foreign policy. Uh, what was your motivation for writing this particular book? Well, in some ways, this book um, evolves out of my last book. The last book was called China Goes Global, uh, The Partial Power. And that book looked at China's evolving role in the world on the global stage outside of China's borders. And, but, of course, if you're going to assess China as a global power, you need to, one needs to understand its domestic context as well. So in some ways, the last book was a little bit incomplete because it didn't look at the domestic drivers of China's global emergence. This book looks primarily at the domestic situation in China, although it has one chapter on China's foreign relations. So that was one motivation. Um, second motivation is I'd been giving a lecture on um, China's future and China at the crossroads. You may recall the first time I gave that lecture was in New Zealand. Uh, when we were together there at, the, at Victoria University in Wellington. And then I subsequently gave a lecture in Europe and the United States, and I kept try thinking about what, what can I do with this lecture? Should I turn it into an article or, or a book? And I decided to turn it into a rather shortish book. Um, and Polity Press, which has published it, I think has found a real niche in the marketplace for very topical, uh, digestible books. So that, that sort of motivated me. Thank you. And at the end, uh, what were the conclusions that you drew uh, when you finished this work? Well, we cannot predict China's future. That's why there's a question mark on the title, uh, on the cover page, uh, um, on the cover of the book, I should say. Um, but based on viewing China comparatively, uh, as I just described, as a, as a newly industrializing economy and as a Leninist authoritarian political system, uh, we can anticipate very well what the challenges are and the pathways forward for China can be based on other countries that have faced the same um, sets of circumstances. So the conclusions are that 
in essence, unless China liberalizes its political system, it is not going to succeed in making the qualitative changes in its structural uh, economic situation domestically that will allow it to move up the value added ladder, you might say, um, and become a developed economy. All that's kind of the bottom line, that every country in the world that has reached this stage of development um, needs to, uh, to become an innovative economy, um, a more globalized economy, and has, there are various features of what developed economies are, but uh, all those countries that succeeded opened their political system. Those that did not succeed did not open their political system. So China, that is the major challenge for China going forward. If they want to continue to develop their economy, they must open their political system. Okay. Very difficult uh, questions indeed. Um, thank you very much again for your comments, and congratulations on the new book. Thanks, Mark.